Hey guys, Sir Shot Midget here. I'm going to be doing a review on my BTC MOSFET. I have the Mark II version. Um, now, I have gotten a request or two about the MOSFET since I've had it. I did make a video um, a few months back where I showed that I put it inside here, but I didn't actually do a formal review on the actual MOSFET. So, I have it inside of an ICSM4 if you didn't see that video. Um, I haven't used this much at all. Um, it shoots too hard for the indoor field, and where I live, it I mean, it's winter, so it is like 15, 20 degrees outside, maybe 25. It's very, very cold, um, and I haven't played outside in a while, okay? So I've been, you know, out of salt airsoft for quite a while, so I, you know, haven't been able to play outdoors. Um, I can't wait till the spring when they do um, some outdoor ops at the... A soldier soft outdoor field. Can't wait for that. Now I will take this. Trust me. The next op, this is going to be the gun. I might take my Polar Star for another op there. Um, depends on how many they do. You know, we'll see. But this, I'm probably going to take this to the first one to give this gun a try. Um, but I do just love my, uh, it's a V12 M4. It's not a legit Polar Star. Those who are subscribed will know that. Um, but I love that gun and I just use that so many places. It's just such a versatile gun. It shoots so far. It's so accurate. Um, and I can shoot it so fast. So, um, I also got a grip. It's a ICS UK1 grip. Um, it feels so good. The part right here is kind of um, uh, smaller, I guess you could Smaller? Yeah, that's the best way to describe it. I'm trying to think of some complicated words um, to show my sophistication, but um, it's just thinner there. That's all it is. And that's where your thumb goes, and it's even on the other side. So if you're a lefty, it's going to be the same way. And it just makes the overall feeling of the grip feel thinner, even though it's not much thinner than your standard grip. It's just the right size. My motor goes up and down in there freely. So um, I do have a PTW crane stock on here. Um, and if you do have the Chimera MOSFET, you're going to have to have some sort of way to store batteries because there's not enough room inside your buffer tube. Um, unless you're using a nunchuck, or if you're using the three-part nunchuck, you should be able to get one down the buffer tube. But other than that, you're going to be stuck with stick lipos, which is why I have the PTW crane stock, because there's tons and tons of room in the tube. I can slide my lipo right in there. Perfect. I have two of these. They're uh, 1,200 milliamp, uh, 15 to 25 C, and I can fit both of them in there, but I only do the one. I connect the battery. And then I push all the wires down in the other side of the buffer tube. Or the other side of the crane stock tube, sorry. And then the buffer tube is what houses the MOSFET board, which I will show you. Now, the Spectre BTC MOSFET does not have a MOSFET board. Well, it does. It's built in on the inside of the gun um, where the trigger parts are. Um, the trigger board. Um, instead, this has the uh, MOSFET board. As you can see. Um, the, it comes with Deans, but it also comes with an adapter if you buy it new. Also, I will mention that the wires are screwed in. There's these screws, and it actually says, um, positive, negative, and then there's also, it says battery, which goes to the battery, and then the other side goes to the motor. So it will, it will tell you, um, so you're not confused whatsoever. Um, also, the data cable here clicks into place. The data cables, I hear that they break. Um, I have a spare one just in case. I brought a, bought a brand new spare, um, so, you know, I guess just in case. Also, the wire has popped off on the back here, but again, it screws in, so all you have to do is just pop it back in place. Um, but since these wires have to be crammed in the buffer tube, it can get quite annoying. Um, this is an ICSM4, so it does have the split gearbox system. So, you can open up the receiver. And then you can see everything in there. You can see the boss MOSFET board. Um, and you can even see the switch. You can see the trigger actually push the switch, the button. Um, a micro switch, whatever you want to call it. Um, now, the wires go right down through here. But my receiver does not hit them whatsoever. Um... What else? I'm going to go over the up internal upgrades, the upper receiver. The hop-up, I'm using the stock hop-up, stock barrel, and a Lone X50 bucking. It's a brass, like, 604 inner. Um, ICS 
upper shell. Um, we have a VFC cylinder, VFC O-ring nozzle, a random tappet, random tappet spring. We have a Lonex metal cylinder head with Sorbo, a Lonex piston head that's metal, um, just like the cylinder head if I did say, excuse me, a SHS metal rock piston that has been AOE corrected, um, a Matrix M125 spring, and a ZCI ball bearing spring guide. Um, I have it marked for about 385-ish FPS. Um, it fluctuates from 380 to about 390. Um, sometimes they get some higher 370s. Um, I do have an M130 spring that I could put in here because this is an M125. So I could get about 395, 390-400-ish with that spring. Um, but honestly, it's just not worth that little bit of power to me. Um, I might go ahead and put it in there, but this gun shoots quite far enough. And since it's about 380 to 390 fluctuates between there with a point two, um, it shoots hard enough. I mean, that 10 FPS isn't a big deal um, to get about 395, three, three, uh, 395 to 400 would be about 10 FPS higher than what it currently is shooting. So that's not really a big deal to me. Um, but I might go ahead and put it in there. We'll see. Um, I'm going to go ahead and put the stock on really quick and I'll put the battery in. Now, as far as lower internals, I forgot to go over those. I am using SHS 1301 gears, short stroke by three teeth. I have a sector chip on there. Um, I am using a retro arms trigger with the short trigger pull mod. I am using, what else? The BTC MOSFET, of course. And then I'm missing something else. Oh, the motor is the ZCI High Torque. Now, the reason why I got rid of my PTW is because the price on those things are just ridiculous. I decided I'm just going to do um, a cheaper gun. This gun is going to be much more cheaper. Um, the ZCI High Torque motor, they're $30 to replace compared to like a Etni motor that's like $150. And the performance between the two is pretty identical. Um, it's just incredible how much how expensive PTW parts are. If PTW parts were as expensive as AEG parts, a lot more people would have PTWs. Trust me, a lot more. Um, I would I would have the PTW if motors were only thirty dollars. Um, even if the high end motors, like even if a system of motor was a hundred, uh, that would be awesome. But new system of motors are two hundred plus. Um, so. I'm going to go ahead and fire it with the upper off really quick. So I have it semi-automatic locked. So for the semi-automatic setting, I have it actually the full auto setting, sorry, on full auto. I have it set for cycle completion. Okay. So you can see there, it's going to complete a cycle. The teeth are right there. So I can shut my upper. And the shimming is pretty dang good. Now, the air latch is still in there for my pre-cocking. It has to be in there. Um, when I push it forward, you can just hear how perfect, perfect the shimming is. It's perfection. So if I hold the air latch forward, listen to it. Isn't that beautiful? So that's the actual shimming on the gears. The air latch makes quite a bit of noise because it's, you know springing and bouncing all over the place so I don't like the air latch sound then we go to pre-cocking that's without the air latch that's with it you can just hear how smoother the gun is with the air latch disengaged so semi and cycle completion um, or sorry, full auto cycle completion, some automatic is going to be pre-cocking. And I have it set for 3 millis, 30 milliseconds, 30. Yeah, I think it's on 30. Now I have my front pin actually screwed in. Um, it has a screw on it because it kept popping out, so it's a little loose. So I just put it in there. It's no big deal. If I ever want to open up the gun, I can just take the back pin out. It's enough and I can open up the gun. I don't need to separate the upper and lower completely. So on semi uh, full automatic setting, we have cycle completion. 
that cycle completion. Pretty quick. Um, not the best though. I mean, you can tell it's just, it's not re really that good. That is with the heavy spring though, so. And we're gonna go to semi-automatic, which is the pre-cocking setting. First shot isn't really quick, and then we have all the follow-up shots are going to be quick. Okay. That is semi-automatic, um, and it shoots that quick. So, uh, with ammo, it shoots a little bit quicker. Um, just to, you, This thing, the, the, the trigger response on this thing is so incredibly fast that it's close to a polar star there are some polar stars out of the box like let's say the v12 engine the v12 engine out of the box isn't actually that responsive when you you can finger you can do that kind of thing with it and it keeps up it counts the shots but it doesn't cycle that quick because the sniper mode is off the settings are kind of high um and this trigger response is probably better than than some hpa engines when the settings are high when the trigger response is not tuned Whereas with my V12 engine, I've tuned it so that the trigger response is so good. Um, the sniper mode's on, so it shoots quicker than this. But out of the box, some engines, this is going to be quicker with pre-cocking. Um, because the piston is already half, oh, more than halfway back. So pretty much the sector gear just brings the piston back maybe three more teeth. And then it releases, which is so incredibly quick. And there's a BB pre-loaded into the hop-up, so it's going to be consistent. Whereas with cycle completion... Um, it's not as consistent because it's, you know, kind of shoving the BB inside of the hop-up unit and then shooting the, and the piston goes forward at the same time. This one, the piston is already back and it's pre-cocked. It's, it's pre-set up to fire pretty much is what it means. Um, so it's just very, very instant. Um, I love the trigger response on it. If I could change anything about this gun, only one thing I would change. I would change the fact that the upper receiver has this stupid rail extension. This top part, this plastic extension, it's higher. I hate that. But new receivers are like $60, $50 or $60 for just an ICS upper, which is outrageous. Um, so if anybody knows how to replace this upper rail with a standard rail without replacing the whole receiver, let me know because there's a screw on the top here so I can unscrew it and take this top off, but the thing is there's no rail there. But I'm sure that you could probably buy a top rail so that it's flush with my, uh, so it can be a legit monolithic and look more of an M4-like. Um, that's the one thing I do not like about it. So... Um, if anybody knows, you, if you could post a link or whatever, just tell me what website I can get just the top rail f from that's going to be flush with my rail. Okay, because this is an extended top one. So if you have any questions about the MOSFET or anything on this gun, go ahead and comment below. Um, you will get some gameplay eventually with this, probably in the spring. I might use this outdoors once, especially if we have a, like a private game back in the woods behind our house. Um, I might take this out there and give it a, you know, give it a go, but we'll see. But thank you guys for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video. Again, pre-cocking. Cycle completion. If you guys don't know what cycle completion is for, it's so that I can open up the receiver without my piston flying forward. So it's safe to open up. Okay, so if you have any questions, let me know. Um, stay tuned for more gameplay. I'm going to be having some gameplay here soon. Oh, I see the, there we go. Um, so I will see you guys later.